Hey, how's it going folks? I'm Gooey and I'm Sticky and it is Goosicky here and I fully intend to do this tutorial in one take. Today I'm going to learn you some things about logistics pipes, specifically in the context of the 1.7.10 pad GregTech New Horizons 2.7.2. So without further ado, why would you want to use logistics pipes? It's highly possible that you're like me. Well, playing this pack, it's pretty inevitable that you love automation, you love to streamline your gameplay, and you have ADHD, but your psychiatrist says that medication won't be good for you because it might worsen your Tourette's and quality of life, but either way, sorting and batch crafting isn't that hard. I know. Believe me, I've done it. But the whole shebang, a big chest with a TIC crafting table, forestry workbench for specialized crafting, drawers, epic bacon, transcendent ingots, you know, the usual. And it worked. It really did, but it would always get messy again. Every time it got messy, every time I had to move and relabel my storage because I needed more space or to be more central to my machinery, it took 20 steps back from where I was. It wasn't fun for me to play like that. It felt like cleaning my room. But then I found logistics pipes, which is a mod that you can use to build an infrastructure network, preferably post-EBF, that you can then cheaply and intuitively hook up to your machine room, your ore processing, and any other setups that you have. It will hold its own weight until at least late HV, where you'll be nearing AE2 anyways, and since it's such an expensive and complicated goal to get to AE2, it's really fucking helpful to have a storage system that can keep up with you. So, uh, so good news is if you have an analog storage system like myself, you can just use a dolly to move all of your chests over to a area probably central to your base. Not in the way, you know, underground usually. In my world, it's under my main floor. You gotta be very selective with where you place it because the latency time that each item is gonna take to travel between inventories is a genuine issue when it comes to requesting items immediately. For example, if you have a farm over here, it's fine if it's slow because it's a passive task, maybe one ticks over at a time. You don't really need to constantly have it right on demand. But let's say you need a wooden stake to kill the 10 vampire fucking pigmen popping through your portal trying to kill you. You'll want it a little quicker, you know? So for starters, the most important block is the logistics power junction, which is a cheap to make item. You need an LV assembler, bare minimum. Basically, this powers every single thing done by the system, like extracting, inputting, crafting, anything requires a little tiny bit of logistics pipes power. So it takes power from any GT source. I powered mine using battery buffers for a while, but you can hook up a stray turbine or just a little wire because it doesn't really use much power once it has a million EU in it. It's a pretty sizable buffer. So it's not really gonna be taxing on your system. It can only connect into the system through a basic logistics pipe or a BLP. And you should have at least one of it connected to your system to ensure that the whole system's powered. So the item list for a basic storage system is one extraction module, one logistics chassis mark one, a provider module, an item sync module, and either two logistics chassis mark one or a mark two per chest. It is super tileable, super scalable, for the very basics, you'll put a Mark II chassis down, attach that to every single chest, and then attach that into the electrical system. What these chassis do is they're like a logistics pipe that you can modify using modules, which allow them to act in different ways. For example, the provider module allows any request pipe in the system right here to access the inventory that's connected to. So for example, this chest, I will put a provider module in. And if we hook up a request pipe right over here and right click on it with a wrench, it'll show us all of the items in the system. Now you can request with this and it will shoot out on the ground, which is kind of annoying. So you'll probably want to put a chest. But what I like to do, of course, is hide all of the ugly parts and put it above ground to what I would call the interface of your logistics pipe network. The interface basically consists of a request logic pipe and then also a dump chest, which consists of a Mark one chassis and an extractor module hooked up to another chest. If you put items into this chest, like let's say lave 12, it's not gonna go anywhere. It doesn't know where to go. It's not programmed to go anywhere. It would be extracted in and then launched out somewhere because there's nowhere for it to go. That's where the item sync module comes in. If you look at the item sync module, it has a pretty basic filter here, which you can like filter what items are requested and a default root button. You want this to be yes for all general storage purposes. You can set default for a whole stack of them. So you don't got to do like one by one by one. 
And effectively what this will do, if you put it in here, is it will allow any item extracted into the system to, by default, be slotted into a chest with an item sink in it. That's pretty much the basics of storage. You can use a wrench to open the request pipe, order the lathe back, it'll be in this chest. Use the lathe for whatever dirty lathe purposes you have, and then you can put it back in, and it will store it automatically. Of course, you can get, like, different kinds of item sinks, such as the polymorphic, which will store items with other items that are similar to it, or the mod-based item sink, which does as it says. And um, what you can do, of course, is just start filling all of these up. Be careful, though. Sometimes you'll fill one with two, and if that happens, you'll want to remove it. Right here, this chest has a bunch of stuff in it, and as you can see, if I open this, it won't show up. So if you ever have this problem, that generally means you lack a provider module. Provider modules, pretty cool. We've been over them. Put that in there. And now it's done. So keep an eye out for that. You want to make sure every single chassis has one of each in order to have it work properly. Because it can be really annoying saying, I knew I had a stack of steel. Where the hell did it go? And you find the chest and it has two item sinks in it. And you're like, ah, okay. So, now I can do this. Got 10 wood right there. Or say, 10 cobble, 10 flint. And I can add a crafting station next to or on top of it, which will access the contents of the diamond chest. Let's say I'm like, oh, I want to make a bunch of furnaces. I'll grab a stack of this. Then I'll grab 40 flint. There's my furnace. Now that I'm done crafting, I put it back in here. And let's say I'm also done crafting with all these supplies, instead of storing it back in their separate chests, I dump them in here. It really makes life a whole lot easier to have everything here with the search bar. Also, this will usually be clicked on by default, so definitely click off the pop-up because actually fuck this. This is terrible. The main upgrade you want to be looking for is uh, once you reach MV, you can access the logistics request table, can replace this pipe altogether. And what this does is provide a, provides a crafting table and also some crafting tools in order to make your life easier. For example, let's say I wanted to request my furnace, look at an NEI, I can shift click the recipe into here, click most likely to use the item that you have in your system. And you can easily click the plus button to get one whole furnace or click the tilde button to fill in the remainder of what you need to craft something. And the two symbols means plus 10 and three symbols means plus one full stack. But if you click say one full stack, it'll tell you what you are missing and how much of it you're missing, which is super helpful. And lastly, uh, you cannot shift click using this as you can with a regular crafting table. But what you can do is scroll. That's all for the basic storage system. This is definitely my first take, and I have not had to do this multiple times. For the next segment, I'm going to be going to my actual world and playing on to show you how to do some more advanced auto crafting and processing techniques. All right, so welcome to the Goosey compound. Looking a little ugly, at least in the plastic production zone, but ignore that. This is, as I said, the central area that I do everything. It's in between all of my basic crafting supplies, my clean room, my EBF, my ore processing is over here. All of this is connected up using one logistics pipe system. Just for an example of stuff I can do, this is my electric glass furnace. I have everything piped in through item conduits. I, this is my steel production. I put iron in there, makes wrought iron, macerated steel. Stainless steel, I put in all of the stuff required immediately moves it through, makes it into steel, along with obviously my oxygen. And once that's done cooking, if it's a hot ingot variety, it will transfer over to this chest using a super duper useful item called a type filter module. Basically, you can click and drag any item into here, such as, I don't know, iron powder, does that count? Yeah, a dust. Then you can click add and it will um, automatically item sync all dusts into this chest. Uh, in this case, I use hot ingots, 
which will split it between these two chemical baths and then suck it at the bottom and put it into my system. So I can automate canthal, I can automate, <laughs> I guess, stuff until I get a vacuum freezer, which is coming soon, I promise. Building off of the type filter item sync module is how I originally made my ore processing. Basically, this is the input chest. Attached to it is a three extractor modules, which will then be routed through several different type filters. This one is raw ore. Into the washer is crushed. Into the iron is crushed purified. And into the centrifuge is dust pure and dust impure. This will then come out the bottom and be routed back through my system over here. Also connected to it is my mixer, which is right over here, and my steam ovens, which are right over here. Other than that, I have my auto crafting system. I have a more advanced one down here, but we'll start with just the main components. Basically, how this crafting system works is, let's say I want a plate. I would like a plate. There are some plates I have, some plates I don't have. For example, I don't have any steel plates. I need eight steel plates. That means it'll suck it out of my storage, bring it up through this pipe, put it into the input chest of my little double parallel machine, and then it will suck it out of the output chest and put it directly into my request table once it arrives, which is super duper useful. Now, how did I do this? I'll show you. These are pretty advanced chassis. I've only shown Mark 1 and Mark 2 so far. The main difference is Mark 3s have 3, 4s have 4. If you can get a 5, which by the time I'm going to be getting a 5, I'm already going to be moving on to Applied Energistics, so I don't think it's very useful. 5 does have 8 module slots, though, which is pretty cool. Anyways, this allows me to put in something called a crafting module, which is a kind of module that both inputs and exports items. So it will input an iron ingot and it will export an iron plate from the same chest. But you may be wondering, if there's an input and output chest, then how can I import items into it and then export out of the export chest? Well, that is a satellite pipe. The satellite has the ID of number three. And as long as I put the item in the recipe in the satellite section and set it to three, it will import into the satellite instead of the original logistics chassis, which will only be used for outputs from now on. So with some clever workarounds, such as I'm doing right here, you can use it to automate pretty much everything. And you can also expand it almost infinitely using Ender IO pipes to get a, to get like much quicker processing times. All right, this is the best method for using maybe a bunch of parallel machines that can make one thing over and over again but let's say you want to have a different machine for every single recipe such as say assembler recipes which have different circuits different fluids inside of them that's when you want to start using a crafting logistics pipe a crafting logistics pipe uses one crafting module and two pipes to make two pipes which makes it a lot more efficient so you're going to want to use these almost all of the time when you're crafting with assemblers what these do is craft only one recipe so this is my SMB transistors. It makes tantalum wire, gallium foil, both of which are up here. So let's say I wanna make some transistors. I'll make 64. You'll see the gallium and the tantalum be put into the machines. And when they're finished, they'll be exported into here. So one of my favorite parts of my build currently is the ability to auto craft circuits. So advanced circuit, I got one in there already. Request that, then request a second one. And you'll see all of the item parts fly up through here, into here, starts crafting a medium circuit, which takes 10 seconds. And then we'll transfer that out and then back into the clean room and craft an HV circuit in 20 seconds which is super duper nice. I have a couple important machines set up to auto craft. I have um, chemically inert casings for LCR set up. I have input hatches and maintenance hatches automatically set up. 
I have the main energy I'm using, which is semi-fluid generators set up. I have assembling machines set up so I can make these very quickly. I also have all of the supplies required to make more crafting pipes, which is really nice. Now, I'm sure there's countless more creative things you can do with this, but that's what I've chosen to do so far. And it's made it really easy to get here. And hopefully it'll make it even easier to finally get to AE2 so I can stop using all this clunky bullshit. Alright, uh, thanks for watching.